All right, got a little bit of gas in there. Now, to those people who don't like uh, primer bulbs, um, boo on you, because this is where the primer bulb would make a big difference. Because by priming that, you could make sure the gas is into the carburetor. Guaranteed that thing is dry as a bone in there. And even while I choke it, the chances of me being able to draw gas up and get that wet fast is probably pretty slim. So, let me see if I got a few drips left. Go right into the carburetor. Yeah, there's some. We'll see if that helps get started. Maybe enough RPMs, it'll, it'll, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe start drawing. So let's see if we have a saw. Come over here and decomp. Because I'm old. Probably don't need that much gas in there. But maybe we do. Fired. switch works um, the on off switch works and it obviously pumps oil I don't think there's anything wrong with this saw it just needs to get run Bob gave me a running saw complete running saw thank you very much Bob and this is look at all the dirt that shook off there. yet again it's a missing hole in the collection and I don't think I need to modify this saw I think it needs to stay stock that runs too good I was going to tear into this and put a 50 millimeter on it or even a 48, but I think it just needs to be what it is. No good saw. No good vintage saw just deserves to get ripped apart. You know, if it runs that good, I think. So. See if it restarts. Well, I think that's what you get when you have, you know, basically good compression and good components. It looks like it has a new fuel line. It obviously has good spark. I think I just need to clean it up and run it. Wow. Maybe put a new rim sprocket on there. So there's my saw that Bob gave me. It's a complete runner. And I think uh, a little review, overview of the interchangeability between the John Thread parts and the Husqvarna parts of this generation saw should be, uh, I should discuss that a little bit. Starting with the tank handle, the orange ones are, are different. And the way you can tell is the spacing of the holes is different on a 372 versus the John's Fred series. And that's all of them, whether it's a 2071 or a 2172, they're all different. They have a different spacing right here. So the tank handle itself is not interchangeable with the Husqvarna set of parts. And because of the way the pull start takes in the air, pull starts different. Top cover is different. Everything's different in the plastic. And another difference is the handle, instead of having a slight angle like Husqvarna, these are straight. And in addition to that, the chain brake paddle itself is straight versus a slightly angled in Husqvarna, so those don't interchange. You can't put a Husky handle 
or you can't put one of these on a Husqvarna saw. They just simply won't fit. Now, a very subtle one is this. The piece of metal here that the chain brake handle is attached to. On the Husqvarna, the part number ends with a 1 on this. And this one's too worn for me to read the part number. It has 01F. On the John thread, this is different. This piece right here is different. And it ends with an 02. The part number changes. It's an 02. And that'll drive you nuts if you go through a conversion of trying to mix up the parts and stuff and all of a sudden you can't get the chain brake handle to fit on properly. It's because this little piece right here is different between John Thread and Husqvarna. So there's your overview. I think that's enough for a day. I think this saw just needs a bar and chain. In, uh, so here's my 2063. Thank you very much, Bob. I think I need just to leave it alone. Just got to clean it up and, and work it. I have to find a small mount bar and chain for it. I don't know if I have one on the wall. And uh, let it do its thing. So. Now you thought it was going to be done, right? Well, there's a bits and pieces section I have to go through a little bit. But before I do that, I need a little bit of recreation, right? A little play before work. Let me see. See if my little... Um, yeah, you know, 372, 37... Oh, yep, John Thread. What we have here, here is a 2171. Looks pretty much like the other ones, doesn't it? This one here, I call it a 2175 because it has the Husqvarna XPW top end on it. It's a 51.4 millimeter versus the standard 50 millimeter. And it has a different ignition. Can't you see it? Should be clear as day. We'll get into that. But this one has the later version of the ignition system that are on the new X Torx. And it starts a lot better once I made that modification. Other than that, this is a relatively unmodified saw. It just simply has the 51.4 millimeter top end, but it has a standard carburetor, muffler, X Torque ignition, but the rest of it is pretty, you know, pretty generic. See? Right? Right next to it is this swap places. This is a stock 2172. And remember we were talking about the differences between the X-Torque saws and the original edition. Well, you can see it right here if you look careful. See how much taller that chain brake is versus the original edition? Same with the handle, same with the top cover. You know, there's a little more space right here. A little taller. And notice it has a decomp up here because of that different cylinder design as well. So this one here is also relatively stock. In the sense that the only change I made on this is I popped out those goofy nylon bearings and stuck in steel caged. And I put it together with a goo gasket versus a standard gasket. Other than that, this is stock. Good running saw. He's seen it many times in the video. And yet again, X Torque after 2009 2010 period, totally different design. Original edition based on the 372. And even though they look the same, there's a lot of stuff that simply won't cross just because of the different design of the cylinder. Lower top cover, taller top cover. Shorter handle, taller handle. If you put this handle on that saw, you can hardly get your hands underneath there with a set of gloves on. Space between here is more with a, with a taller chain brake handle. So we'll put this one away for now. And go back to the original editions since that's what we were focusing on. 
This is my modified 2165. Now the thing you're going to find interesting is this 2165 has a lot of the 2166 parts on it. So this is a case of blending the X-Torque parts with the original edition saw. And if you look at it, you'll see pretty quickly what I'm talking about. Chain brake handle, handlebar, taller than the stock one here that would have come with that saw. See how that's shorter? Yet again, um, these were designed for the taller cover and the taller cover was designed for that taller X-Torque cylinder. Now, I happen to like this because it gives me even more space, especially in the winter time when I have big gloves. So in that case, it's not a detriment. Now, the other modification on this saw and the blending of the different models is not as obvious, but it's the carburetor. Actually, I can just take off the filter. Now, that is a next torque carburetor um, adapted to the original edition 48 millimeter. 2165 cylinder. I did a whole video on it, so I'm not going to go back do it again. But one of the things that I got out of this was a lot more power. Um, and I can't explain all the reasons why, but I've also made a fair amount of modifications to that whole system as well. It's not something you just take off the shelf and bolt onto the original edition saw. You have to make some modifications. I'm not going to go through that again. Um, this saw here runs strong. I love this saw. But this is a case of blending the later X-Torque parts back to an original edition and coming up with something that's a blend of both that's better than either one, in my humble opinion. This 48 millimeter build will easily outrun the 2172 in a stock configuration, quite easily. And if you notice, this is actually a later model yet cover. This came off of a 572, so you can take the 572 cover roll it back into the whole 372 class set of saws, right? And yet again, can't mix Husky in here because of the spacing here, angle, angle, all the stuff we had talked about. But you can take certain parts of the X-Torque series, be it John Thread or Husqvarna, and then roll them back into the original edition version, like I did with a handle, chain brake handle, carburetor intake, stuff like that. And even more importantly, yet again, can't you tell? Look at that beautiful ignition in there. Well, that ignition is huge. So here's my 2171. Here is my 2165 modified with 2172 or 2166 parts. And then back to the saw that started the whole video was this guy right here, which is an original edition. Twenty sixty three, not even a twenty one sixty three, a twenty sixty three, with the chain adjuster here instead of in here. And but if you were to look at them, a lot of people would look at those saws. There's a lot of them. I could do that shell game, and you wouldn't be able to tell which one's which. It's all John's threads, right? But. More shell game, right? I'll put that 2165, and you can see the taller parts because they came off the X-Torque in there. And then I'll take it out, and I'll put the X-Torque 2172 in there. You see the taller parts? And uh, I think that makes a fairly good case is what the difference between them are. Now, since I opened up that door, we'll put these away. Here's a few bits and pieces that I had not mentioned before that you have to consider for completeness. Carburetors. This is what the X-Torx have, and there's a couple of different versions of these. Okay, 
this is what the original editions had. And basically, the original editions had some version of the HD 12 wall brows. A little bit smaller bore, you know, completely different. The biggest difference being how the, how the screw holes are oriented relative to the carb. Where you can tell this one here, if you put it on the original uh, brackets and stuff, would be rotated versus the stock one. Right? We've gone through that again. And again, because of the different carburetors, you've got different filter holders. Here's a filter holder from original edition. Here's one for X Torque. You can see that divider inside there because you have to have the air passage. And that's one of the big differences also. Inside these carburetors, you've got a bunch of air going straight across the top that goes into the strato ports. But it also comes in in a different spot on the filter holder, goes into the top of the carburetor. And then on the intake boot itself, you see those different passages. That's for the X-Torque versus the original edition. Let's see if I have one out of the bag one that's out of the bag where the original edition doesn't have any of that goofy crap at all you know here's X torque notice how they got to be rotated the carburetor's got to be rotated here's original edition boots right all that junk in the X torque now here's an X torque piston let me see if I've got the other piston handy. Remember I was telling you about the different uh, size pistons? Oh, look at that. There's your newer wrist pin. See how thin that is? And so there's the X-Torque piston. Here's the original edition piston. The original edition piston is much smaller, therefore much lighter. Therefore the uh, balance on the crank is different, which goes into that whole discussion I was talking about before. And when the bearings go, that's what they look like. Got enough of those. Pistons, wrist pins are different, cranks are different. Getting into the weeds here, but some people want to know. One of the other differences is things like choke levers. One versus the other is different. Ignition systems. I did talk about that a little bit, but what I've got here, this is a a later original edition 372 ignition that's rev limited to 13.6. I was saying 13.5. This is a 2005 ignition system and it's rev limited to 13.6. Where it doesn't say on these X torque ones, but the, the rev limit on the X torques is 13.3. And like I said before, as they are stock, you want to run them about 1300 RPM no load. And you don't have to worry about hitting the rev limiter and then leaning it out too much and creating other issues like this. But there was a variety of different changes to the ignition system. I've got two of them right here on the X Torx and the later versions make a huge difference. Here's a 2012, this is a 2014. This one here, I'm not sure whether or not it's new enough, but the newer ones uh, as I was saying, they changed the timing curve, but they also started making spark at a lower RPM, and you want that ignition system. All the John's threads you have here, all of them, I went and upgraded those ignition systems to the latest version. And to those people who say, well, wait a minute, you're putting a limited ignition on a hot saw, trust me, you're not going to tell because you're not going to cut at 13,000 RPMs unless it's a race saw. But the ease of starting, it's idling, all the low speed characteristics are so, so much better with that new ignition. It's worth doing. And uh, this little gem right here definitely has it, as it has the, the later cover. So what else? I've got the different boots, the different filter holders, the different carburetors. Here's an early, early, early 372 ignition, unlimited. Things like the little clamps on the intake boots are different because of the different diameter where it intersects the cylinder. 
So there's a lot of other little details. Bottom line to me is I like these. And while these are nice running saws, this is a 2172, while they look the same, hopefully by now you'll see that uh, they're really completely different designs. So many levels, so many different pieces. So I think I'm going to end it. And uh, I'm going to put these in the closet and I'm going to do one little demonstration to close off the video. Look at that. What did you just see? That was removing a bearing from a case. And I didn't have to use a hammer. I didn't have to do a darn thing except for drop that case on that piece of wood. And guess what? It flopped right out. Now, I know that's being a little bit dramatic. But what we're going to do is just review how to change a bearing in a case and it doesn't matter if it's a 372 or any other kind of case just as long as it's a situation where you have a steel bearing steel races and aluminum or magnesium case it's the same problem it's the same solution it doesn't matter if it's motorcycles outboards saws 372s four well 455s of plastic ones i'd melt them uh, steel or husky or anything else is the same darn thing. Now, if I drop this bearing in just with my finger and it slips right to the bottom, I have not had any chance of peeling up a little piece of aluminum that would block the side of the bearing from actually uh, getting all the way to the bottom of the pocket. So I know my bearing will be square and I haven't done any degradation to the wall of that bearing pocket so that I know that I haven't in any way, shape or form made it larger than it was before. So the OCD part of me can't just be quiet, right, while I'm waiting for those cases to heat up. And I happen to have my uh, temperature, my laser point-and-shoot thermometer upstate New York doing the outboard type things. So I don't have that here, so I just got to let it cook. These are the two bearings I got out. Neither of them are particularly any good. No, this one's all right. Yeah, they're both SKF steel cage, which is good. Here, let me pull one of these cases out. I don't know if they're the temperature yet, but I suspect they're probably pretty close. That's how I put my bearings in, just like that. There's one.